I remember being on a clergy retreat once, and the retreat master cast Jesus into the mould of the heavenly burglar, Satan, with power and dominance over mankind, and armed to the teeth. He jealously guards his property, but the stronger man, Jesus, comes on the scene, ties up his adversary, and confiscates all the we weapons he relies on. Now the great drama of our redemption is captured in this little story. Jesus overcomes the prince of darkness and reduces him to a weakened state. Satan is down, but however, he's not out. We're at liberty to choose which kingdom we prefer, light or darkness. Jesus doesn't force himself into anybody's life. He's not a manipulator like we sometimes are. It is in the Garden of Eden that Satan enters onto the stage of human history to deceive mankind. And after eating from the forbidden tree at the instigation of the serpent, Adam and Eve fall from grace and friendship with God. Their companionship with God is replaced by fear and suspicion. When couples become suspicious of one another in marriage, for instance, love usually goes out the window. They start blaming each other. Adam blames Eve and Eve, Eve blames the serpent. Playing the blame game is entering the slippery slope of any relationship. Jesus, unlike Satan, doesn't point the finger at anyone. He actually does the opposite. He takes all the guilt and shame of our sins on himself and atones for them on the cross. Adam and Eve also realise that they are naked and become ashamed in front of each other. Now part of the fallout from original sin is this shame which we have inherited. Everyone has inherited it. Our first parents covered themselves up precisely because they're scared of being looked upon as objects and taken advantage of. We said a couple of Sundays ago that the opposite of love is not hate but being used by another human being. That's why human trafficking is so evil. But in subtler ways, we can also use each other, often without fully realising it. Before the fall, man and woman wouldn't dream of taking advantage of each other because in their state of original innocence, the thought of desiring each other from a lustful motive would never have crossed their mind. Sin hadn't been invented at that stage. The Catholic Catechism puts it like this. After the fall, Adam and Eve's image of God becomes distorted. He's now seen as a God who is jealous of his prerogatives, suspicious of what his creatures are getting, getting up to behind his back. Along with that, the soul's control over man's spiritual faculties is shattered. Passions can easily spiral out of control. The union of man and woman becomes subject to tensions. Their relationship henceforward is marked by lust and domination. And I think we had a good example of that recently with the Me Too movement. Finally, man will return to the crown, the ground of which he was taken. Death makes its entrance onto the stage of human history. But all these negatives associated with the fall are reversed by Christ. That's the good news of salvation. The power which Satan had over mankind is drastically reduced. Succumbing to the evil one is slavery, but submitting to Christ is true freedom. Through our baptism we become subjects of his kingdom, the full flowering of which will only be in paradise. I must thank you very much for listening and God bless you all. Uh.